You want to see something new? You got wet filament? Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Scott, Edge of 3D, and today we have the new Polymaker Poly Dryer System. It's a, uh, it's a filament dryer and a storage system all in one. So, just real quick to go over it. it it's a storage system. You can see right here, looks like a cereal box. It's got a snap-on lid. It's got a hygrometer in there. It's got discing in the hygrometer. Store your filament in it. You can print from your filament. Might be kind of hard to see, but there's uh, roller bearings in there, and yeah, you can use it to print from, but it does more than that. The whole system comes with this dock, which is the dryer dock. It's got three settings, low, medium, and high, and up here on the top, it tells you PLA all the way down to PVA, gives you low, medium, and high settings, uh, recommended time, and... You pop the covers off the bottom of the storage box, you set it on there, press the button, and it dries. When it's done drying, you can pop it back off there, you pop the plugs in the bottom, you've got a dry box that you can still print from, it's got a port on the top, port on the front, you can flip the lid around, feed out of the front or the back, PTFE tube shoves right in there, seals up real nice, and uh, so, to get on to the questions, the number one question is, how noisy is it? Well, it's running now. You can't hear it, but I also have noise canceling. So I went ahead and checked it with a dB meter right here. And the one that came in the lowest was the Creality at 53.3 decibels. The loudest was the old school dehydrator. That came in at 70.8. And the Polymaker dryer came in at 58.2, and just for reference, ambient noise in this room is 31.7. So, it's not loud. You can hear it. It's fan noise. I mean, I can set the mic down here next to it, and you're not going to hear anything because noise canceling. So, the next question. I've seen a lot of this. Will it dry nylon? Well, proof's in the prints. It dries nylon. So what I did is I took a roll of nylon out, set it out for 48 hours, and right now ambient uh, humidity level here inside of my home is running about 50%, so a little damp, and it's enough to make nylon mess up. So I took the roll of nylon, I set it out for 48 hours, I printed this temp tower. It's, it's a mess. Put it in the dryer, set it for the high setting, ran it for 24 hours, printed a new temp tower right there. What I want to show you is, it's still in there. This is the one I dried it in. If you look right there, yeah, still 10% humidity in that box. That's been over 48 hours ago that that came off the dryer. I popped it off, popped the plugs in the bottom, Fed the filament out, printed it. Uh, I didn't even bother to roll the filament back in and plug up the hole. It's, it's still sticking out the hole, so. Hey, it dried nylon. The nylon printed fine, so it'll do nylon. The next question I see from people is temperature. They, they want to be able to see a number on the temperature. Polymaker decided not to go that route. They just decided to go with a low, medium, and high and recommended drying times. So I went ahead and used a dual probe calibrated thermometer and I did some temperature checks. And on the, well, we'll just start with the dehydrator, the old school dehydrator. Um, I ran it with the knob set at 50 and I ran it with the knob set at 70. At 50, it maxed out at 66.1 degrees down on the bottom there, this probe that's down on the very bottom, and 58.3 with this probe that's up here in the top. At 70 degrees, it maxed out at 85.3 at the bottom, 72.3 at the top. 
Now, on these two here, I did averages. So what I would do is run them for 30 minutes, and then I would take an average over a 10 minute span. The Creality, I only set it at 60 degrees. It actually maxes out at 65. I set it at 60, ran it 30 minutes, took a 10 minute average on the temperatures. At the bottom was 67.8, up here at the top was 55.1. Now, something I wanna note on this one right here. It's got a metal bottom in there. That metal bottom got hot. I mean, like burning skin hot. I didn't stick the thermal coupler down to the metal bottom to actually get a temperature on it or check it with a laser, but it got hot. But set at 60 degrees, 30 minute heat soak, 10 minute average after the 30 minutes, 67.8 on the bottom, 55.1 on the top. So now the polymaker. Polymaker has three settings, low, medium, and high, and it gives you time recommendations right there on the sticker. Mind you, they're putting, they've, they've changed the formula on the sticker because those of us that got the pre-production units for testing, the sticker's bubbling. Low setting, 30 minute heat soak, 10 minute average. At the top, 37 degrees. At the bottom, 38.7. This is all Celsius. Mid setting, top 42.9 degrees, bottom 45 degrees. High setting, top 56.2, bottom 59.9. So there's your temperatures. That's what I was able to get. That was using this right here. And again, I would take and set it to run for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, I would take a 10 minute average, a timed average and take the average of over 10 minutes and that's where we got the numbers from on that. So there's the particulars, there's the specs. Do I think it's necessary to have a temperature on there? No, I don't because I use this one. I don't dry PLA. Um, occasionally I'll have a silk PLA that I'll dry because silk PLA seem to get really touchy with uh, humidity. The regular PLAs I don't dry, so I use this one mostly for ABS, ASA, and nylon, and I just crank it wide open and turn it on and let it dry for six hours for ABS and ASA, usually 24 hours for nylon. It works. Um, you can print from it. It's got a little port here on the back as well. You know, it's got ball bearing rollers inside of it for the spool to turn on the same. Um, but one thing this one can't do is if you got a spool that doesn't fit those rollers, you can't print from it. You can set the roller and you just can't print from it. The Polymaker box, there is a shaft that comes with it. You can take smaller spools, you put the shaft in there and it drops down in. You can see kind of the, you know, depending on the lighting in here, but it drops down in there. So the spool can ride on a spindle or on the rollers. Uh, few other things to note on this. The top. Very, very tight latches. And that's by design. Because it really latches them on there tight. It seals up tight. When Polymaker was doing smoke tests on this, um, they were actually swelling the box. Press, pumping smoke into it to see if there was any leaks. The box would actually swell. So, it seals up very tight. And Another thing I noticed, I don't know how many of you like using the uh, this style of coupler, the pneumatic coupler for the Bowden tubes. If you pop the rubber plug out of these, screw that right in there. Don't know if that's by design or not, but there you go. It's screwed in. It's solid. Personally, I prefer the rubber plugs. They work great, they seal up great. So, you know, this is a kind of an all-in-one or a multi-purpose modular system. You buy the heater dryer system once, $80, $79.99, and then you can add boxes onto it, use them for storage, print from, 
And when you're done drying this one, you just take it off there, put that one on there, obviously put the covers on the bottom to plug it up and, and uh, take the covers off that one. But uh, I'll go ahead and shut that off here. The way I've been using it is I've got a few of these now and I've got them set out by my printers and when I'm changing out a filament, I just, I grab the dryer dock, throw it underneath the box, start it drying, start printing. After it's done drying, pop it off there, pop the covers on, just leave it at the printer with the filament loaded up. It's been working great. You know, this was my solution prior to that, which was a big sealed box with some printed parts inside there for the spools to ride on and some printed parts to make uh, Bowden couplers here to run the filament out through. You know, I would take and dry my filament in this dehydrator, transfer it over to that box, feed out of that. I've got shelves up above and it would feed down to the printers and it worked fine. Um, not the cleanest setup, but it worked good. But this setup right here, I love it. Uh, on the printers, I have the shelves above them. The box sets up above the printer, feeds out of this tube down to the printer. On the printers where I have room between them, I just set the box between the printers, feed it right out of the back of the printer, just exactly like this one here is, and it just works. Like I say, this right here, that's been... Uh, been 48 hours. Now I popped the lid open on it so it grabbed some air out of the room here and you'll see the uh, the uh, humidity level in there has jumped up to 14%. It'll drop back down to 10. So, you know, when you get it, you open it up. The uh, Let's just go ahead and, now I want to use this one. Sorry about all the noise. This right here is packaged separately. The discant's in a pack. You gotta pop this cover off and pour the discant in there and try not to spill it everywhere. Links in the video description down below. I designed a funnel that you can print, drop in there, pour it in, take the funnel out, pop your cover on. That goes right in there. And that's really all the, uh, all the assembly there is to it. Pop the lid on, set it on the dryer and start printing. So, is it the best? No, I don't think there is a best. Is it a great solution for people with more than one printer and multiple filaments that they want to keep dry? Personally, I think it is. Um, obviously, the first dry box heater combo and dry box, I was sent by Polymaker, sent it to me free of charge to try out. I have purchased multiples of these with my own money since then. Um, Eventually, I will transition over to mostly having all of these. I think it's a better solution than individual dryers at each printer. Seems a little expensive on the surface, but when you start figuring out you only got to buy the dryer unit once and you can buy multiple boxes at $30 a piece, as opposed to multiple dryers at $50, $60 a piece, suddenly it starts to make sense. So that's the Polymaker Poly Dryer Dry Box Storage Solution System. Little bit of numbers on it. It works for nylon, worked for me. I tried it out. Um, I just don't have time to continue to do the same thing with the nylon over and over again, take it out and let it soak for 48 hours and then use another dryer. I just wanted to try this out, make sure it works good in, the, in this system. It does, I love it. And links in the video description down below. They are affiliate links. I do get a couple of cents if you use that affiliate link to purchase either the poly dryer or poly maker filament. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you that take the time to watch these videos. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know when I drop the next video, hit that bell icon. As always, I appreciate all of you and peace out.